Thank you for tuning in to Tiger TV. Welcome to another exclusive interview. I'm Bryce Johnson. Joining me today is the new president of LSU, Dr. William Tate. How are you doing, sir? Outstanding. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty well. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, the first question I want to talk about uh, uh, involves COVID-19, specifically uh, the vaccines. Uh, the Board of Supervisors have had recent discussions uh, about whether or not the university should mandate students to get vaccinated upon returning to campus in the fall. Um, ultimately, what they've recently decided was to wait for FDA approval. Uh, to mandate the vaccines for students, but for now, incentives have been put in place uh, so students can maybe get encouraged to get vaccinated. Um, now with your leadership and with your background in epidemiology, how do you think LSU students should return uh, to classes this fall? Do you, would, do you believe the vaccine should be mandated? Um, as far as masking go, uh, goes, do you think uh, we should continue masking up in the fall? And uh, yeah, what's your plan for that? Well, first, it is illegal if I understand the law, to mandate a vaccine. Um, and I, if I understand it correctly, even if a mandate were put in place, there is an opt-out clause within the law so that there can really never be a true mandate for a vaccine based upon Louisiana law. So the reality is um, all we have is science and access on our side. So we've got to try to incent um, our student body to look at the science, um, assess it, evaluate it, and then raise the question, well, how do I want to assess my higher education in the fall? The optimal scenario to me is obviously pre-pandemic, and one way to get there is if people get vaccinated. And so if our faculty is vaccinated, our staff is vaccinated, and the student body is vaccinated, we're going to be closer to a pre-pandemic kind of experience. Um, the vaccine has been holding up in relative terms with the, the various variants. That's great efficacy, um, very, very strong science. Now we have to uh, motivate folks to actually take the vaccine. It seems out of the groups of faculty, staff, and students that students are uh, the least vaccinated, and that might be because of a lot of things said about you know young people getting vaccinated and how can it, it can affect them. Would you think that uh, possibly getting uh, courses set up for students to get more educated on the virus and the vaccines and the effectiveness of it uh, would be a good solution to get more students to get the vaccine? It's clear that more information is needed um, by the general public and by students at large. We're learning a lot about the vaccine's efficacy in real-time studies that are being produced at an amazing rate. The one thing that if you don't get anything out of the pandemic is this. The science um, that led to that vaccine was amazing. The fact that it was able to happen in the kind of time frame that it happened it is nothing short of miraculous. I mean, this, the science is unbelievable. Now we're going to track it, and we're now learning more about um, who's it effective with, who's, who's it's not effective with, and when conditions aren't um, optimal. But so far, it's holding up, and it's holding up in some very, very difficult uh, conditions. And so. I'm excited about the fact that we have a vaccine. If you were to ask me this time last year, when I wasn't president of LSU, but I was a provost and I was responsible directly for making sure the teaching and learning process um, could happen in a robust fashion. If you'd have told me then that we actually would have a vaccine right now, I would have stood up and danced for you, right? I mean, I would have been pretty excited. Now here we are with it um, and um, looking good and we, we don't have a lot of people, a lot of takers. So my hope is that we will increase the number of people who take it so that the LSU experience in the fall is like it was in 2019 or 2018 or 2017. Students can experience the full, uh, the, the fullness of what it means to have a residential undergraduate or graduate experience. Uh, the next topic I would like to discuss is that of uh, the Title IX issues that have been going around at LSU. Uh, several women have came out over the past year about sexual assault allegations at LSU, um, and LSU has received criticism for you know, ignoring it, not doing enough. Uh, since it has come to the attention of, of many, Tom Galligan has implemented a Title IX office uh, for students to use to report any cases of their own. Um, and as you've dealt with sexual assault cases uh, back in the University of South Carolina, what are your plans to improve the university and increase, uh, and increase ways to prevent more incidents, uh, specifically with the athletics program, to ensure that there's less sexual uh, misconduct on campus? Well, 
let's let's back up a second because I'm new to LSU and I can back up a second. And if you back up a second and you ask your question about Title IX and uh, sexual assault, it is a national problem that had local implications, massively important implications. Nationally, we know that um, sexual assault is happening on a regular basis. We're going, unfortunately, to be tested. And so we've got to have prevention, and we've got to work on prevention at a, at a, at a very high level. We want to prevent sexual assault. How do you prevent it? We've got to work on all kinds of programs that are based upon the research and literature. And then, unfortunately, if it happens, we have to have an approach that's the appropriate intervention. What are we going to do to support the victim? And how is the victim going to be supported from a, a health perspective, from a psychological perspective? And then there has to be a process that's trustworthy in how things are adjudicated and how things are examined in terms of the investigation. And there is a, a time frame on all those things that have to happen in a, in a speedy fashion. So we've got to put together a process that allows for that to happen. And whether it's in athletics or in any other environment that's associated with LSU, and if we can do that and do it on a consistent basis, we'll be a national model because very few can. And we've got to try to do it, and uh, that is the aim. Um, I'm different than Tom Galligan. He was a lawyer. I'm a public health person. So I would like to build off the strengths he had as a lawyer in putting together processes by looking at it through the lens of public health. And hopefully that combination will strengthen our uh, ability to be consistent in how we respond to who, victims who come forward and take care of their needs. Uh, due to a lot of what I've just mentioned, uh, students have had a hard time trusting the leadership uh, at LSU and uh, believing that change will come. Under your leadership now, how do you plan on earning the trust of LSU students? All you can do is be consistent. Do what you say you're going to do and consistently carry it out. And I think the key is for people to understand what your principles are what do you what do you want to put into place and then you've got to make sure that happens and when it doesn't acknowledge it just raise your hand yes that didn't work well we're going to get better and here's how we're going to get better and be clear about it so i expect to be held accountable on what is our actual process um, is it clear could an average person you don't need to have an undergraduate degree to figure it out if a person off the street can't figure out what you're doing then that's a problem and so I want a clear, simple pathway that anybody who reads it, because here's the deal. We want families and communities to say, I want my kid or my, my young person to go to LSU or an adult who's finished undergrad, I want, the, I, I want to be able to come to grad school here. And they've got to be able to read it, synthesize it, and say, I think that place is safe. Or that place at least will help me stay safe. And that's extremely important. It doesn't work well if you don't have that. And I think that's the, that's the aim. That's what we have to shoot for. And it's going to take a partnership, students, faculty, staff, and our community to make that happen. In January 2021, the LSU Board of Directors approved the request to make the African and African American Studies program into a department. Uh, as you are not only a professor of African and Amer African American Studies at Washington University, but you are now the first black president of LSU. Uh, how do you plan on improving and expanding the department? Generally speaking, the president is not um, directly involved in academic affairs per se, but you ask me a question that's very deeply, is personal, so I'll make it. Um, I think it's important, and, and I haven't seen many institutions um, that had uh, an inclusive environment that generally didn't have a very strong African and African American Studies program. Um, it, it's a robust part of uh, the American uh, story. And if it has a global perspective, obviously the African diaspora is, is quite robust. I think it's important that um, we take inventory of what we want to prioritize over the next few years. One of the things that I have to do as president, working with academic affairs, is to say what are the priorities here at LSU from an academic point of view. And I think that's going to be part of what we have to do in terms of our strategic planning. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll all come to bear soon because the strategic planning process is a collective activity amongst faculty, staff, students, and alum, and we've got to come together and figure out, you know, what, what do we want to be known for? What do we want to be great at? Um, there are hard decisions to be made, and I look forward to working with the community to figure that out. All that said, 
Um, I, I firmly believe that um, understanding the history of our country and the like is extremely important. You mentioned that that was a personal question for you. I'd like to ask you uh, maybe another personal question. Uh, your wife, Kim Tate, she is a YouTuber with over 90,000 subscribers. She's a Bible teacher. She sings. She songwrites. Uh, she's obviously a big influencer. She has a podcast. Uh, how has she influenced uh, your own life decisions, your career, and perhaps maybe your, your, uh, your decision to come to Louisiana? Yeah, my wife is a, an amazing person. I've been married 28 years, and so obviously you don't stay married 28 years if your wife is not influencing you. Um, she is a, a person of faith, and um, we share that faith, and that is part, partly our journey. Uh, the decision to come to LSU uh, was brought with much prayer and uh, in our, our co collective agreement that we're being led to be here, we think it's an extremely important part of who we are as individuals. Um, I am really fortunate to have a wife who um, cares enough about her faith, she likes to share it with other people, and uh, thus, you know, through music and um, her own Bible study, she's been doing that, and uh, it's been amazing to watch uh, the individuals who have come into our life who have who benefited from uh, her investment in, in teaching of the Bible. Uh, clearly, the first fruit of that were you know, my kids, and they experienced that as well, and so I'm, I'm thankful for that. In a recent interview, you said, and I quote, we find the money, get you here, and give you the opportunity to live your dream. Student media has struggled with funds which hurt our ability as reporters to grow and lessens our opportunities to prepare us for real world reporting. Uh, how important do you think student media is to a college campus, but to LSU in general? Uh, how important is it to you? And how will you ensure that student media is continued to be funded to grow and increase our opportunities for journalism? So I have three principles that guide my leadership. Seek truth, be empathetic, demonstrate a courageous attitude. If you have a student media that is seeking the truth, and they're empathetic, and they're courageous, you're a better campus. And so for me, um, I view journalistic activity in general, but obviously students who want to be in that world, both um, while they're students and perhaps, perhaps as a career, it's vitally important to uh, a robust campus. The views of students and all those who they seek to include in their, um, in their work is extremely important. Um, you care deeply about campus. Obviously, you're a student here, you matriculate here, you, you're invested in it. And so you're going to ask questions that might be different than a, a newspaper that is outside of the campus that might be for the region or for the state. And so I think it's vitally important to have a robust and strong uh, student newspaper, radio, and, uh, and all four forms of media. Um, it's not just TV anymore. And, and I think that's extremely important to have if we want to seek truth. Um, there's a part of being a student that um, allows you to say some things that some people can't or won't. And so I love it. I, I think it's extremely important that um, students have a voice in that way. And um, you obviously represent that. We've talked a lot in this conversation so far. We've talked about COVID-19, Title IX, student media, uh, African-American studies, and the importance uh, for students to learn our history. That's all been brought up to the forefront. For you, when you look at LSU, what are some, prob some problems that you see at LSU that you plan to address? Well, I don't look at the world as problems. I, I look at the world as opportunities. And we have an opportunity here to do some very special things. Every, everything that happens or has emerged in newspaper articles is an opportunity to be better. And so we can use those to uh, get people focused and prioritized. We should be a national model for doing uh, Title IX related work. Um, we could be uh, a national model on, you, you pick a topic, mental health. I mean, there's an epidemic happening with individuals from 18 to about 25 right now. We should be thinking, well, how could LSU be a national model in that? And each one of these areas in which we get data and, and, and see challenges are really opportunities to be great. And if you think about the world that way, um, you're more likely to be successful and more likely to go in a positive, pro-social way. I mean, if you think about the world as woe is us and this is all negative all the time, then you're probably just going to put your head in the sand. What are the opportunities to be better? And so we have some in front of us.
and we've just got to collectively as a, as a community push forward and be better. All right. Uh, one last thing uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, for the fine students and faculty at LSU, if you could just look at the camera and give a, give a go Tigers. Oh, a go Tigers? <laughs> First of all, I have to have something. Here's my go Tigers. I want to make a commitment right now, and I, need, I want to know who's with me, that we're going to look at the SEC and everything we do and absolutely invest in beating the competition. Are you all with me? Who's actually with me? If you're with me, then go Tigers. Go. We can do this together. <laughs> Let's do it together.